We are the knights who say me. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you're too young for this channel. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, I stated in the previous episode where I covered elementals broadly, okay, um, plant spirits, aka, some people say diva, some people say deva, whatever floats your boat, tomato, tomato, but anyway, they are just one of the many types of elementals that exist, specifically, these spirits fall under more of the benevolent category of type of elemental because they are very angel-like in their nature as they keep watch over particular plant and animal species. So, you know, if you watched the episode before this one, you know, there is a spectrum of where things fall into them, especially the elementals, because you can have elementals that are evil, you can have elementals that are neutral, and you can have elementals that are good and that are benevolent. But anyway, I'm going to be pretty much covering those and giving my experiences because I am an earth element being a Capricorn and actually have a lot of earth in my chart. So for me, connecting with plant spirits is kind of easier now because I'm now aware of, you know, other things that exist. And anyway, it just is just easier. So I'm going to pretty much give a description of what they are, how they work, and so on and so forth. So there are plant spirits that are called devas or an angelic like benevolent being that keeps watch over particular plant and animal species so, um, they're pretty much like nature conservationists, if you want to put it in those terms. And they can appear as any organism, and their role is similar to what it does in its natural environment. So, you know, every organism has the equivalent on the metaphysical realms, right? And this is what these are. They're the equivalent version but on the metaphysical side of things. So there is an article that I found written by John Payne called Devas and, De and Devic Kingdoms Channeling Omni that says life on your planet could not exist without Devas. They are the very glue that holds physical manifestation together. The angelic kingdom, which includes the Devic Kingdoms, is the point of manifestation these beings which can be in your terms extremely vast in nature or minuscule they are the point of manifestation for they form the bridge between non-physical and physical between form and formless so a lot of people like to say how trees themselves are a type of portal to where it connects the physical to the non-physical I agree with that statement. Let's use bridge. Bridge is a better term. But I, I also feel like then all plants are a type of bridge because of the type of energy that they are, right? But couldn't technically everything then be a type of bridge? Because it's like we have two parts of of ourself, our physical body and our metaphysical body. You can technically connect using the physical to connect to the metaphysical. So in a way, maybe not so much a portal, but more so a bridge. But yeah, so you have these plant spirits that are more of a bridge to the metaphysical. And then it is the same with the blade of grass, the same principle and the same process for each blade of grass, for each flower, there's a being of angelic substance 
that holds the image of that expression within its mind. In doing so, it directs energy towards formation. Every object in your physical universe, when looked at close up, is not physical at all. It is simply a collection of atoms, molecules, and subatomic particles that are held together in an energy field. So go back all the way to the clairvoyance episode where I talked about subatomic particles and string theory and non-locality. Yeah, this is kind of like a full circle situation here. Um, but yeah, so all these particles held together in an energy field creates the form. That energy field, that cohesiveness, is as a result of directed thought. And I will link the um, website of where I got this information. The only reason I'm relaying it in this way is because I 100% agree with what this person is saying. And honestly, their explanation is way better than what I could have given, to be honest. But devas are found everywhere and are fairly evenly distributed around the globe. There are divas of differing kinds, just as there are different animal and plant species, like I've stated last episode, and differing specializations amongst humans. It is also so with devas. The highest concentrations are to be found in the rainforests, mountain ranges, as also in city parks and gardens. So again, you have certain plant species that only exist in certain parts of the world. So like the rainforest, for example, they have thousands of plant species that only exist there. So the devas that exist there are going to be different than the ones that let's say, exist in the United States or even Europe. The high concentrations found in city parks and gardens are serving a twofold purpose. Firstly, their primary objective is to serve the greater good of the parks itself and each individual organism in that park. And they are also there to transmute and transform heavier energies often present in cities into higher energies that are more easily integrated by city inhabitants. For this reason, parks have become a place of refuge, peace, tranquility, and healing for many city dwellers. You will also find devas in large quantities inhabiting balcony and roof gardens in small plots. Although the primary service of a deva is to the plant kingdom, in these contexts, there is added dimension of service to the human beings in this environment. Plants and plant spirits have the ability of healing and purification. So it is very important to have them around to maintain the balance of things, especially energy, right? So it's like they take all the negative energy and purify it. That's why it's so important to ground yourself and release that negative energy that you hold within your body. You need to do this, right? And the plant kingdom and the plant devas understand this and that's why you know i always say go touch a tree <laughs> make friends with the plants it is so important because they provide so many benefits that will help your health whether it's your mind body or spirit okay so keep that in mind devas do not have it within their consciousness to abandon they are servers by nature, and their nature is to serve. What humans can learn from devas is that a deva carries out its task diligently and with enthusiasm, and a deva never carries out a task that does not fill it with joy. In other words, devas do what they love to do. They don't abandon worlds. They love them into existence, and they love them into fruition. Even in your most highly polluted regions, those areas that have high levels of toxic waste and nuclear waste. Davis are busily working to uphold the integrity of life. This is another good example. So remember when I said what happens in the physical is also carried over in the metaphysical? This is a great example, right? So you have toxic pollution and areas like Chernobyl, but how come it's still overgrown with plant life? It can thrive and survive, and that plant life still 
you know, sucks out all the carbon dioxide, all the pollutants, and purifies it into oxygen for us to breathe. And if you think about it, now apply that to the metaphysical. In the metaphysical, it's taking all the negative energy and then purifying it into positive energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed. And then in this, in these two, I keep doing it, in these two scenarios, that's exactly what's happening. All this energy is being transformed into something more positive and more beneficial. Do not assume that toxic waste is a negative condition that burdens the devas or divas unreasonably. Devas, like yourself, create their own reality and choose on a higher level to participate in this reality. Like you, they chose and they choose experience and they choose what they wish to learn. Yes. So it's not only people. Okay. So you have a soul, right? And souls want to ascend as high as they possibly can until they can't ascend no more. We're not the only souls that do that. All the souls do that. So humans, animals, plants, that's why it's possible to be an animal in a past life. Our souls are energy. Everything's connected. We're learning. We're bringing it, everything in. And then at the end of the life time, that knowledge is then absorbed back in. But also it's simultaneously being absorbed back into the higher self too. But it's just the whole time concept is what kind of makes it so confusing. The thing with plant spirits, they can be great teachers and can offer us a lot of wisdom and knowledge using its natural roles and specialties as a way to teach us these lessons. They often work together with your guides, they can be guides, and they work with your soul and work on your chakras and meridians. Whenever you ask for healing, Devas are dispatched to carry out the fine work. They can weave in and out of your chakras, transforming denser energies and integrating higher, much lighter energies. You may call upon them in meditation. Some are as small as a pinhead. Others are as large as a tall building, vast in size and in consciousness. They are everywhere. The greatest service that you as a human can offer them is your gratitude. Simply acknowledge that they are there and thank them for their presence. When you buy plants for your gardens, terraces, home, or roof gardens, sit quietly and invite the devas into your garden or home. They are partial to quartz crystal, so you may want to place a few fairly large and clear pieces in and around your garden. For those of you who live in the wilderness, this is not necessary for there are sufficient pure minerals and crystals present for them to enjoy. So a little side note about that. Recently, like um, that understanding I had been talking about with the tree deva or dryad, technically it's more, a dryad is a type of deva, but so for the sake of video, I'm just going to call it a dryad, even though it's it's a type of deva. But so I had this understanding with the dryad outside and I placed a bunch of crystals. One day I just felt so called to that tree and I'm like, you and I should work together. I don't know what it is and being drawn to you, but you know what? Here's some crystals. I'm kind of like in a city, so it's it's not very nice like, um, nature wise, like we don't have a lot of trees and grass and things. We do have some, but it's not like being in a forest. So I was like, you know what? Here's some crystals, live your best life, accept my offering of gratitude. I enjoy your company and thank you for all that you do for the environment and for us. And like, yeah, saying stuff like that to it and it agreed that it would help me like protect my space and keep certain pests out like uh astral spiders specifically when they more but anyway um so yeah so we kind of like that understanding 
And it's really important to build a relationship with plant spirits because of the healing benefits that they provide. And to be honest, you know, whether you're a psychic medium or just a psychic or intuitive or sensitive, what have you, regardless, it is important to maintain a relationship with plant spirits so you can release that energy that your body will naturally hold and then that energy can become purified and it doesn't leave you ill and or with other problems like block chakras, attracting other spirits that you probably don't want, etc, etc, etc. So that's why it is important. In the beginning of my awakening journey, I kind of had a very closed a closed mindset, if you will. I didn't understand the possibilities of everything that existed in the universe. And like, I don't know. It was just like, I believed in demons, angels, earthbound spirits, and like aliens and shit. But like, that's where it kind of ended. But then when I opened my eyes further, it allowed me to see everything that was on the outside of the box that I had put around myself. And being an earth energy or having earth in my chart and being very clear or clair sentient, it allowed me to connect with nature spirits on a, I would say, easier kind of level, right? Let's just say it ain't difficult for me anymore. So I want to talk about some experiences that I've had specifically. Um, I had gotten a basil plant one time and I actually had, I, I think I was meditating. I either meditated or I fell asleep, whichever. Didn't matter because I was on the astral realm and I met this girl. She kind of gave me Tinkerbell vibes because she was like petite, blonde, but she had like short hair instead. She got the blonde hair and the blue eyes kind of short, almost like four feet tall, um, almost childlike in a way, very pure in essence. And she was talking to me, like having a great time, you know, we were just talking about energies and things. And yeah, I just remember having a conversation with her. I forget what her name was anyway. But one day, you know, she took a hit for me because vast amounts of negative energy were um, aimed at me, whether it was from, I forget why, but I think it was just an entity trying to attack me and she took that attack for me and it killed the plant and it made me really sad. While the physical plant itself died, the spirit still lived on. So it's not like she herself was gone forever her energy was just transmuted into something else. But yeah, that kind of made me really sad. So my spirit guide that is the tree dryad, he teaches me about herbs and things. Um, He taught me that I need nature in order to ground myself a lot more than most people because I am an earth element and I need to spend a lot of time in nature to, yeah, get rid of that nasty stuff. Oh, he pushes me to more herbal remedies because of my past issues of absorbing medications. Like, I I don't want to say correctly, but let's just say I am the side effect queen and any side effect and or bad, like, reaction you can get, even from, like the most common medication that doesn't give most people issues will give me an issue. So he always pushes me to more herbal remedies because my body needs that instead of the chemicals that, you know, the pharmaceutical companies be pushing. But um, yeah, so I've been learning a lot more about herbal remedies. And he, oh, he's the one who told me that people should start going more towards herbal remedies 
because medications are going to get really difficult to find in the future. I don't know how far into the future, but they're going to start pulling some things off the shelves and or there's going to be an issue where you're not going to be able to get the ingredients to make the medication. So it's always good to have the herbal version instead of the chemical version. Plus, you know, our bodies accept it more and it's easier to be broken down and absorbed within the body. My spirit guide gives me a lot of uh, information. He's, he's the most dominant one too. He's the one that's constantly talking to me um, and feeding me information. And it's actually pretty cool. He's very like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe his personality. He gives me nerd vibes, to be honest. So that spirit guide looks like the character Milo from Atlantis The Lost Empire, the Disney movie. And he gives me like the nerd vibes and it's so funny. But yeah, that's what he kind of looks like. I'm trying to think what else. When it comes to nature things, He's the one that kind of bridge, he bridges the gap between um, and helps me navigate through like, so when I astral project and I go to these different worlds or different realms, especially like the more naturey ones, he's the one that's helping me get there and making sure, you know, I don't go to the wrong place because it's so easy to go and make a wrong turn. But yeah, he always guides me with that and with the animals. Oh my god, the animals. Recently, <laughs> recently, I've been having these two squirrels just greet me at my front door. And it's actually really cute and really funny. But I've noticed, like, animals love my ass, okay? I've had a fucking bird in the wild land on my shoulder. Not shit. Not shit. I didn't have a bird ever shit on me. Thank you. Thank the bird spirits and the Lord, I guess, for not letting that happen. <laughs> um, it's And I've just been having a lot more communication with animal spirits on Astral Realm. And in two episodes, we'll talk about animal spirits specifically. But um, yeah, so when it comes to nature things, that spirit guide helps me communicate with other nature spirits or spirits of nature and yeah it's it's a very I would say he's a very good guide to have especially if you're somebody that's clairsentient you need a plant spirit on your spirit team I'm not kidding and honestly just ask just ask for one they'll be more than happy to help you um, and you can ask through meditation, through prayer, light a candle, ask, what have you. Just make sure your intentions are known and they shall deliver. Because we already pretty much covered this on the Lights of Midnight podcast, I don't want to go too much further into this. You guys should watch or listen to that episode um, for my... Pr- for more information also chastity's information but yeah so like guys if you made it this far thank you so much for watching if you have any questions thoughts concerns add them down below in the comment section you know if i ever get any updates i will always update y'all but anyway guys i hope this gave you a good understanding of how plant spirits or divas devas I'm sorry if I've said it wrong this entire time, but um, yeah, hopefully you learned something and gained something, you know, important from it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace out. If you guys like learning about different types of spirits and entities, I highly recommend checking out the Lights of Midnight podcast where we did a mini series where we covered the diabolical all the way up to the celestial and we pretty much hit a lot of entities in between. So yeah, definitely recommend listening to those episodes.